and so I'm a lead resource developer at Zano project <laughs> and today together with Koa who's who is an independent researcher and a brilliant time behind Strux protocol uh, we uh, going to present as Canon, which is a proof of stake protocol uh, compatible with hidden amount and confidential transaction so what uh, why is it important what's the point uh, until quite recently, some people believe that uh, proof of stake by its nature isn't compatible with uh, hidden amounts and confidential transaction. And uh, actually, we find out how it could be combined together, how it could be implemented. So, uh, yeah, together we uh, today we are going to be talking about proof of stake, and there are uh, several proof of stake models out there. For instance. Stochastic proof of stake model uh, that uh, was suggested by Peter Cohen in 2012. Um, PBFT model that um, probably most mostly known and uh, most widely uh, adopted. We will be focusing on stochastic model because it's uh, more vegetarian. Uh, and uh, quick story behind this. So Zana, Zana project is a evolution of Balberry. Balberry is an implementation of CryptoNode. And many years ago, uh, when uh, Crypto Zoidberg, who is sitting over there, uh, <laughs> was implementing uh, Zana, he decided to use a hybrid proof of proof and proof of stake consensus. And he decided uh, to use the Hudson proof of stake model. Uh, so uh, we will be using this model as as a basement for our discussion. So before going forward, we need to understand how the fast proof stake model works. It's very simple. Uh, it uses like open amount classic proof of stake conceptions. And here we have uh, on the left side we have a blockchain that grows downwards, and on the right side we have a wallet full of UDX. So so imagine it's Alice wallet and Alice would like to mine a proof of stake block uh, using sh her output as a stake. Uh, to do this, she needs to fill special structure that is very simple and it's called stake kernel. And the first to fill of this structure is uh, just the current state of the blockchain. So it has some information from uh, the last uh, proof of work block and some information from the last proof of stake block. Next, uh, she needs to pick up a block timestamp from a very limited set of possible block timestamps. And then she goes through the, her list of unspent transaction outputs and pick up one by one, pick up K image, put the image in this data structure and hash it using a cryptographic hash. As a result, she gets value h uh, and this value is can be considered as pure random value and like uh, in a proof of classic proof of work consensus this value is being compared against a boundary and this boundary like in proof of work consensus is depends on difficulty the higher the current difficulty is the lower the boundary is. So the higher difficulty, the less chances you have. But at the same time, this boundary is um, proportional to amount of current stake output that being used. And this is necessary to make these outputs to be like normalized by, by the value. And effectively, it could be considered like, like a lottery ticket. So if, for example, I have a lottery ticket that uh, costs one dollar and a lottery ticket that costs one hundred dollar. I have, I will have one hundred more chances to win this this lottery ticket. And after that, uh, if this condition is satisfied, it means that Alice is liable uh, to publish this proof of stake block. So she used this data that she. Uh, Put on this data structure state kernel. She used this block timestamp, which uh, and this design it works like more or less nouns in a classic proof of work consensus. And uh, she used uh, stake, her stake uh, output as an input for this uh, minor transaction, 
and of course a key image will be published so uh, everyone on the blockchain each verifier could um, combine all these data together and reconstruct this state kernel hash it got the same result and make sure that this result is less than the required boundary and here we can see why this design is considered to be a vegetarian because uh, we don't need to be you don't need to be like in a special privileged list of valid errors or you need, don't need to lock your output for some period of time and so on uh, as soon as you have unspent transaction output in your wallet, you can win a proof of stake block. All you need is to run this protocol, just not to miss uh, your chances. And uh, uh, there's a couple of words about possible timestamps. This timestamps is highly discretized, so it goes uh, like after 50 seconds with a description of 50 seconds and has a, a, a lower and higher boundary and these boundaries are sliding as time passes. So, for instance, if Alice check all her outputs and find that no output wins this proof of stake condition, she only needs to wait until 50 seconds passes. So, this uh, window shifts and she gets another valid block timestamp to be put in this structure and like it will render all the hashes, get new new set of hashes and new uh, chances to, to, to check this in addition. So this design is great, but when uh, it comes to hidden amounts, we can use it anymore. And we cannot use because uh, very far I required to use, uh, yeah, required to use this stake amount over there to make sure that uh, this win condition is satisfied and amounts are hidden so it can be used. Uh, so uh, when we use hidden amounts we are talking about uh, classical uh, person commitment here so we have A for amount, F for random mask and uh, amount is committed using generator H and G which has no known relation between them. Uh, yes, so we have this problem and uh, what, what solution we suggest? We uh, modify this win condition, uh, we use, sorry, we use uh, L, L stand for uh, order of the main uh, group G and uh, we use this with this slight modification. But like what's the point? We're still using A here. So. Uh, now we, uh, the whole idea of the canon is the following. We uh, convert this inequality into equality and then use homomorphic property of parents and commitment and range proof on top of that to uh, proof and zero knowledge that this inequality is satisfied. So how we do this? Uh, actually, if we have uh, some, some number over there which is smaller than some number of them multiplied by A, it means that we can uh, represent it by an equality which we have uh, A multiplied by some multiplier D minus a residual BA. And this BA will, would be, of course, less than, than A. And we know that A is an amount, so A is less than 2 to the power of 64. So a, BA should be less than 2 to the power of 64 as well. Uh, and you then this limitations we and you in this equation if we like find out a way how to prove this equation is another launch we uh, eventually uh, convince the verifier that this uh, inequality is satisfied as well so we have uh, this equation over there we just rearrange it a little bit and uh, after that we come we need to do almost the same looking equation. So we have almost the same variables, we just put it um, in, a, in different order using kind of mirroring strategy over there and we define this uh, new variable like, like this one. So at this point we have uh, all known these variables and we have a system of two equations that we, we need to prove in zero knowledge. How it could be done. We use multiplication by generator H and generator G over there 
So we multiply each component on the left side and on the, on the right side by uh, corresponding generator and then sum up together all the equations. And we can do this because we believe that this generator has known uh, has no no known relation between them, so we end up with a single equation in uh, group elements instead of two equation in scalar elements. So what we have here, f and a fall down to point a prime, that's shown over there. Uh, a and f fall down to point a shown there, and this is our original amount commitment from. You take so that that is being staked. And here BA and BF fall down to point B, that is shown over there. And actually, this uh, allows us to make a simplest zero common proof. So, what we need to, to do is to reveal uh, Scarlet D. We need to reveal this mirror commitment A and uh, point B that is used for edge proof. Then we need to prove that uh, these two commitments have a uh, proper form. So we, using a kind of Schnorr proof, we call it in our white paper, we call it uh, linear composition proof. And uh, after that, we need also to, to make a range proof for point B to make sure that BA is uh, less than 2 to the power of 64. And once we provide these proofs, we uh, we can we can prove for external verifier that this uh, inequality is satisfied as well. So that's the point, and that's how it could be in simplest form uh, proven in zero knowledge that win that win condition is satisfied without revealing the amount. All right, so the next question we have to ask is, uh, how do we add ring signatures to this system? So we start, this is hidden amounts, but you're directly referencing which uh, output is staked. If we want to add a ring signature to that output so that uh, the an approver or a verifier fire and observers cannot know which output satisfied the state condition, we need to uh, do some more work. So if we have decoy outputs, which A is used in the verification? Um, and since and we, since we have, um, since in ring signatures, the pseudo output commitments mask is user defined, it could be easily used to cheat if the pseudo out, output commitment were used directly in the uh, proof of stake proofs. So what we what we do is we pr we produce another pseudo output commitment to the same amount a uh, that uses a that puts the the pseudo the pseudo mask onto a new generator x. Oops, where's the button? Here we go. The heck. Yeah, okay, so we 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 produce an ex, what's called an extended commitment by putting uh, so the the pseudo commitment is this ex extended commitment with the, the mask on an additional uh, generator instead of on to G where the so the the mask on G was produced is part of the output that was originally added to the chain before this this staking uh, event is is taking place. So it's it's the in the state kernel we're binding to the state of the chain, which which means we're binding to this value f here. But we're not binding to x, which is a a new mask that is added during uh, during the the proof, proving process. So to prove that this new c is correctly related to the to A, which is our um, the the commitment of the to the amount in the output, which which is part of our which we're using for the stake proof, we we add a layer to the ring signature. Uh, it's simply showing the the relation between these commitments. This is very very similar to what we're doing already with in ring signatures. 
uh, proving the relation between the pseudo output commitment and the out and the output commitments in the ring. And so, so now now that we have this 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 extended pseudo commitment, we mirror it in the in, a, in the same way that we mirrored uh, the commitment uh, for the simple Zarkanum proof with a new mask x prime. So the key the, the key to this ring front this ring signature design is is adding masks at every level every level of the proof. So we add a ma mask x to the original extended commitment and we add a new mask to the mirror extended commitment. And then we we create a proof that the that c and c prime have the proper relation using two linear composition proofs for c plus c prime and c minus c prime. And we use we use two, we use two um, proofs, two linear proofs here to ensure that the ratio of f and a is maintained between uh, across the mirroring operation. Okay, so now we can do what we did before with a new layer for the masks at the bottom. So here, b x the new. This is this is a new mask for the masks that we added to the um, to the, the the extended commitment in, the, in its mirror. So we, we we have to mask we have to mask the masks uh, to avoid situations where uh, the the sender of the original output that is being staked could infer or deduce that the that that output is being staked here, so we add it. We add, we add another ma uh, randomness x double prime in order to produce a randomness b or this so, so that the value b x is randomly distributed and not dependent on x prime and x. And so as before, these fall down here into c c prime f a x prime. A F X here, and then uh, the, this value E, which is uh, the same as B in the uh, the prior, uh, the simple Zarkanum proof here. And so now we have our ring friendly Zarkanum proof, simply with the the extended commitments. Oh. Here, we reveal. The, uh, the the factor D, the extended commitments, and this, this E, which is a commitment to the value B A, essentially, with two masks. Um, and then we we prove that prove that B A has the proper uh, is in the proper range, which which indicate or which which exposes to the verifier that the inequality was satisfied. Uh, we uh, because we do not have do not have enough time. We do not cover two important questions, which is how to fully preserve sender receiver anonymity so that the sender cannot identify when the, the sent output is staked. So we we partially just dis discussed that, but there are more details. And then also, how can we prevent um, a brute force attack that can that can expose uh, or uh, break privacy in this scheme. All right, so finally, we can look at the proof size of a Zarkanum stake, uh, stake proof. In total, we, we get uh, 64 times n, where n is the number of ring members in the stake, stake proof, plus 900 bytes. And then uh, additionally, we add 32 bytes per output, um, per output that's, that's added to the chain. I believe we did not, I think that that's part of uh, preserving sender receiver anonymity is it's required to add a, add, a, add a key to each output that is added to the chain. All right, that is the end of our speech.